So there's a baby behind me, and this story is coming from a scientist who has a unique interpretation, and he's got the research to back it up. He thinks that the reason babies cry at night is to prevent siblings, right? Now, I never really thought about it this way, but it does make a lot of sense. So this guy, his name is David Haig. He's an evolutionary biologist, and he has this idea. The baby who demands to be breastfed in the middle of the night is preventing his mom from getting pregnant again. And if you take it back to our evolutionary roots, you know, where we came from and how like survival of the fittest works, I mean, each baby back in maybe when we were, uh, you know, a Neanderthal or something is competing for the same attention from the parents. It's competing for a fixed amount of resources. And I think for a baby to, you know, prevent more siblings means a better chance of it surviving. But that means they'd have to know. I mean, that also means that a baby would have to know beforehand. Like, I guess you'd have to know at birth that like mom and dad laying in the same bed equals siblings. Well, it's not laying in the same bed. I mean, I think it's just, it's an evolutionary thing. It's hardwired into the DNA. Yeah, it's hardwired into the DNA. Like, I guess, yeah, so you're saying sex is hardwired into the DNA. Well, it is. I but mean, like, was, it's not a theory of mine. I, I think that that's No, like, that's definitely true. I'm just trying to figure, you understand what I'm trying to say, America, right? Like, he would have to know with like a month that when mommy and daddy, when it's sleep time, mommy and daddy make babies. But I think it's maybe even just as simple as when it's nighttime, it, it's more likely to happen. That means you have to know that it happens. That's what I mean, like the knowledge that it happens. But do you, I, I don't think you necessarily need the knowledge to do something that's like evolutionarily appropriate, right? Like I think animals do a lot of things instinctually that they don't actually understand the reason why they do it, mm -hmm. but they do it anyway. That makes sense. Right? And you know, I think- That makes total sense. That was, a, I had an aha moment there. Right? So it's interesting. So, I mean, I, I think a lot of parents, you know, you hear the horror stories about they got the new baby and, you know, it's keeping me up all night. It's, but you it also got to train your crying. But you've also got to train your baby. I and mean, that's a controversial thing. You've got to train your baby. I mean, I, and I only say this from experience. As folks know, my mom was a NICU nurse. Um, You'll know. And uh, we used to always, like, I remember, because we used to go to this big church, and every time that somebody would have a baby, the baby would always be at our house within the first, like, three months. <laughs> there was always babies at our house. And, like, my mom would always tell them, you've got to train. Every time the baby cries, you can't run, like, to get the baby. Sometimes you got to let that baby cry. And you're supposed to let him cry it out? Yeah, and cry it out and go back to bed. That works. I mean, that's like a... So a lot of people don't train their babies. I'm not saying it's wrong, but... It's a controversial statement. I think it's probably about 50-50. I mean, there are people that say that, you know, baby. The, they say the baby needs the love and the attention. And then there are other people that say the baby's never going to learn. No, and it's the same you... as like when people bring the babies into the bed, right? They bring the babies into the bed. Yep. And then before you know it, it's like, eight, he's 15 <laughs> and he's still in the bed. Yeah. And this it's goes to one. another pet peeve I have about babies. While people we're here. who don't know how to control their babies on airplanes. It's a real yeah. big I mean, problem for me. I don't think you invented that pet peeve. I think no one likes that. No, but like, all right, because I was on a flight not too long ago. The airline were remaining nameless, and there was two babies. One baby was sitting next to me, which it's usually a problem for me, but it was fine. And there was another baby a row over. The baby sitting next to me the whole time. Like, you know, he was a little fussy, and the mom was just like, listen, Linda, I am not <laughs> playing that game with you. You're going to suck this. I will end you if you start gonna, screaming on this gonna You're going to suck this pacifier, and you're going to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> and she put on, like, it was the TV had plane, the airplane, the, the TV had, the airplane had TVs, and the little baby watched the little, you know, cartoons, and she was fine for the whole ride. And then the other baby, a row over, in the last hour of the flight, the baby starts to literally scream bloody murder for an hour. And the parents, like, rubbing the baby's oh head, and they're like, God. oh, okay, it's okay, it's <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever. And then the plane lands, and the baby shuts up. And I'm just, I literally gave, the, like, the dirtiest, like, Really, take that baby to the bathroom and calm that thing down, <laughs> and so the rest of us can have an enjoyable flight. It was an hour of just that screaming at the top of their lungs. Luckily, I had headphones, but I still could hear it over my headphones, and I have great headphones. Which is great headphones. All right, we're coming up on the break, folks. Tell us about your baby theories. 